Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and today we are going to compare the Suzuki DRZ400S with the Kawasaki KLR650 because obviously I own both of them. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy, so please consider subscribing. I've owned this Suzuki DRZ400S for going on two years now. Ridden it on and off road, lots of trail riding, some highway, some of everything. Basically, it's a dual sport that does it all, and I've done all of it on it. And this is my newest purchase. This is my 2022 KLR650 Adventure, which I've had for a couple months now, put 1,200 miles on, and I did a full, actually, 1,000 mile review of both bikes, which I can link for you in the description if you want more in depth thoughts on how I feel about the bikes individually. But as soon as I bought this KLR, one of the most common questions that started cropping up was how does it compare to your DRZ? Which bike is better? Which one? would you rather have? So this video is me kind of giving you my experience and my thoughts as someone who has owned and ridden both bikes. Let's just jump right in with some stats. So if you're not super familiar with the basic stats of each bike, here they are. The DRZ400S is a 398cc single cylinder engine. It's a five-speed transmission with a Makuni carburetor. The front suspension travel is 11.3 inches. Rear suspension travel is 11.6 inches. The rear suspension is adjustable, both preload and damping. Seat height on the DRZ is 36.8 inches. It has 11.8 inches of ground clearance, weighs 317 pounds, has a fuel capacity of 2.6 gallons, 39 horsepower, and the MSRP for a 2022 model is $69.99 US. There are two models of DRZ that you can buy, the DRZ400S, which is what I have here, and the SM, that's the supermoto version. The KLR650, this is a third gen KLR650, brand new this year, 2022. So the stats on the 2022, it's a 652 cc single cylinder engine the transmission is a five speed just like the drz new for 2022 on the klr is a dfi fuel injection system so it's not carbureted anymore front suspension travel on the klr is 7.9 inches rear suspension travel is 7.3 inches the rear suspension is also adjustable both preload and damping very easy and quick to do i made a video which i'll link for you the seat height on the klr is 34.3 inches the ground clearance is 8.3 inches the curb weight of the klr is 460 pounds, so significantly heavier than the DRZ. It has a fuel capacity of 6.1 gallons, has 40 horsepower, and MSRP ranges from $66.99 for the base non-ABS 22 KLR all the way up to $79.99 for the Adventure, which is what I have with ABS, which I don't have. And there are three models, as I mentioned. There's the base model, there's what they call the Traveler model, which comes with the top case and some charging options, and there's the Adventure here, which has crash bars, the charging ports, side cases, uh, these fog lights, and a few other extras. Those are the basic stats. So let's talk about what they have in common. And they have actually quite a bit in common. So I understand why people often ask, you know, which one should you get? Because on paper, they're very similar. They're both single cylinder dual sports. They're both pretty heavy bikes compared to some of the lighter dual sport European models out there or to a dirt bike for sure. Both bikes are very capable and will get you through everything but the most extreme hard enduro stuff in my experience. Both bikes are inexpensive, relatively. I mean, $8,000 or $7,000 is not nothing. But when you look at it compared to a KTM or, you know, a bigger adventure bike in the case of the KLR, seven or $8,000 is on the low end of what you can get a new fully equipped motorcycle for. So they're inexpensive options. These are two of the most bulletproof and reliable motorcycles of all time. They both have been around for decades, mostly unchanged. This year on the KLR, the 2022 is like the biggest updates in terms of adding the fuel injection, a few other things, but the engine design, most of it is basically the same. So this is a proven, reliable setup, both motorcycles, you can't go wrong. They're both really friendly to people who forget to do maintenance or are bad at maintenance or um, aren't really good or interested in working on their motorcycles. They're sort of forgiving to you, kind of forgetting to do things that you're supposed to do. They last a long time, bulletproof, hard to kill motorcycles. If you're concerned about reliability at all, you can't go wrong with either one of these bikes. And that is not my opinion. That is a proven fact over the decades that they've existed. That's just their reputation. These bikes, both of them are very easy to work on. If I can do it, anyone can. Stuff's kind of easy to get to and they're not super complicated, so they're not super hard to figure out. And if you have a question, both of these bikes have a, a community of riders that's existed for decades that you can tap into. Lots of groups, very helpful people, honestly, on both bikes in my experience, on Facebook, the internet, Discord groups, lots of forums, lots of people on Thumper Talk and other places like that, ready and willing to help you if you have questions. And there's so many people that know so much about them and are willing to help because both of these bikes inspire 
loyal to you. They have a dedicated following. It's not a cult necessarily, but there's definitely people who really, really love, know, and enjoy these motorcycles. And, you know, will always have one or the other in their garage. So these are the types of bikes that inspire people to become KLR or DRZ people from what I've seen. For the most part, people are pretty helpful and cool. There is that sort of weird supermoto hooligan community associated with the DRZ. So sometimes you get some of that that leaks in, but for the most part, it's just a bunch of cool, laid back, down to earth people who are willing to answer your questions. So those are the good similarities. Those are the good things they have in common. Here are a few of the negative things that they have in common. They're both very heavy motorcycles, particularly when you're talking about dual sports. They're just a little bit heavier than a dirt bike or a dual sport. Now the KLR, it's really, really, really heavy. It's a very, very heavy dual sport. And that's why in my mind, it's less of a pure dual sport and more of a hybrid between a dual sport and an adventure bike because that extra weight changes some of the things you can do and limits them, which we'll talk about but uh, they're both very heavy, they have that in common. Neither bike is very modern, they have not been updated much in decades. Uh, the KLR getting fuel injection is about the most modern thing that's happened to either one of these bikes. The DRZ is mostly unchanged since 2000 when it was first introduced. No ride modes, uh, the KLR just got ABS this year. Uh, the DRZ's clock can't even be switched from 24 hour mode. I've had Casio watches with more sophisticated electronics than the DRZ. They're very simple bikes. They don't have a lot of features. There's no bells and whistles. You know, they don't come with grip heaters or lean sensitive cornering ABS or any of that. It's a motorcycle, a whole motorcycle and nothing but a motorcycle in both cases. Very basic. That's an advantage in many ways. But if you're looking for those modern features, they don't have them. And both bikes only have five gears. And that is a real sticking point for some people. I honestly, legitimately, my honest opinion about the five gears is I don't understand why it's such a big deal because I've taken both of these bikes on the freeway up to 75 miles an hour. Do you need more than that? I guess having more gears means closer ratios on your gears down low. Maybe, I don't know. It has not been a problem for me. And I've had bikes with six gears. I've had bikes with five gears. I don't see what all the fuss is about, but there you go. It's a little high strung at freeway speeds because it only has five gears, both bikes. Let's talk about what the KLR does better than the DRZ. First of all, any type of highway travel, anything at 55 plus for any length of time, I would much rather be on the KLR. It has a windscreen, it's got a big fairing that's protecting you and keeping you out of the wind. It is just more comfortable at highway speeds. It's more comfortable to ride overall. The KLR is a far more comfortable motorcycle, uh, but that's because it's more for those long rides and the DRZ is more for like to be capable as possible and yeah, you can sit down if you want to. You also don't get blown around as much on the freeway because the extra weight is actually actually an advantage there. So if I'm riding down the freeway, I definitely want to be on my KLR. It's much more comfortable for that. The KLR is better at what I would call transportation. It's a better bike for going places. It's a better bike for riding from you know, Argentina to Alaska, or even just over the mountain and back for a weekend camping trip. The DRZ is more fun when you get off the pavement, but on the road, any type of distance you're traveling, the KLR is more comfortable. It's a better suited bike for that. It's got that big, long, wide, flat seat, which is not only more comfortable, but gives you the ability to strap more gear to it. It's got that big, wide platform on the back that comes stock, also better for carrying gear. And there's a ton more luggage options out there for the KLR. People have been riding and touring on KLRs for decades, and there's just so many options out there so it's just a better bike if you want to do long distance touring if you want to ride all over the place and also have some capability to hit off-road stuff when you get there the klr is a much more beginner friendly bike the seat height's a little lower and it's a lot less twitchy now the the drz isn't super twitchy but it has a lot of torque so if you really get into the throttle, you can bring the front wheel up. On the KLR, that'll never, ever, ever happen. It has just sort of a reliable kind of chugging but -da 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 delivery of power where it's really hard to get yourself in trouble even if you make a big mistake. Like rev it up, drop the clutch. It is hard to spin the rear wheel on this bike. It just has this very smooth, very easy, very forgiving power delivery. The KLR also comes with available ABS. You can't get ABS on a DRZ, so that's a concern. If you want ABS, you're going KLR. The ergos overall are more comfortable for sitting and riding for longer periods on the KLR. That big, big wide seat is pretty comfortable right out of the box, and I immediately swapped the seat on this DRZ for a seat concept seat, much more comfortable, glad I did. So that's what the KLR does better. What does the DRZ do better? Well, it's got way more suspension travel. It's got way more ground clearance. It's a much lighter motorcycle and it has more power. They have the same horsepower, but a DRZ 
is a lot lighter. It is 100 plus pounds lighter, 140 pounds lighter. It feels so much more fun when you twist that throttle on the DRZ than it is on the KLR. The DRZ is the fun motorcycle of the, of the two. The KLR is transportation, the DRZ is entertainment in my mind. It's entertainment that can transport you, the, the DRZ is, just like the KLR is transportation that can entertain you, but primarily, this is the fun bike, this is the get you there bike. It's easily the most fun motorcycle I've ever owned. It is so fun to ride, but it is just not comfortable in every situation the way that this KLR is. That, in my mind, they fulfill completely different purposes, which I'll talk about in a second. So bottom line, the question you want answered is which motorcycle should you get? And my answer to you should be obvious if you've been staring at me sitting between these two bikes for this whole video. The answer is both. I know that's not practical for everyone. I know I'm lucky to be able to do that, but let me just explain why, for me, the answer is both. The DRZ is my dual sport slash dirt bike. It's my trail riding, single track. I'm gonna go explore the forest and I do not know what I'm gonna get into. I'm gonna head out across the desert and I know I'm gonna come across rocky technical stuff. If I don't know what I'm gonna encounter on a day trip, I want to be on this DRZ every time. That's what it's for for me. The KLR is my adventure bike. It's for going to places far away and taking all my gear with me and knowing that if there's fun stuff to ride when I get there, if I need to ride through the backcountry, through the woods, if I need to hit a BDR or something like that, I'm also gonna have the capability to do that. It would not be my first choice for single track, but everything up to and including a sort of washed out, rutted technical Jeep trail, I feel very comfortable on this bike. Anything beyond that, single track, muddy, washout, stuff like that, I'd much rather be on my DRZ. But I feel comfortable enough on the KLR that if I come across something unexpected that I have to get through, I can. I just don't want to do that all day on it because when I have a choice, I'll take this bike. This bike is more fun for that stuff. So if you have to decide between the two, if you really are looking for a one bike solution, one, understand that the unicorn bike doesn't exist. There's no one great bike for on and off-road. There just isn't. But if you're trying to pick between these two and you want to know what the determining factor should be, ask yourself a couple questions. One, how much time will you spend on the highway? If it's much, if it's more than half of your time, then you probably want the KLR. The DRZ will do the highway, but it's not fun. You're going to be tired when you get where you're going, and it just makes your whole experience less fun overall. You can't carry as much gear on the DRZ. It's not as easy to set it up to carry a ton of gear. But if you're gonna spend a lot of time on the highway, of these two bikes, I would consider the KLR. KLR is smooth and easy and eats up hundreds of miles, thousands of miles easily, and is still capable when you get where you're going, just slightly less capable because of its weight and lower ground clearance than the DRZ. If you're gonna spend a lot of time on trails, if you wanna go trail riding at all, and by trails I mean single track, OHV area trails. Some of you, I say trails and you hear forest roads. No, like legitimately manufactured trails for riding off-road, for only ATVs or dirt bikes. If you're gonna spend a lot of time or any time on that, the DRZ is the way to go, in my opinion. The good news is, they're so similar, you can't really go wrong with either one. They're fantastic bikes, they're reliable, they're easy to work on, they have a great community, and they're inexpensive, and you're gonna be happy either way, because they're both great. If you're stuck between the two, the best thing you can do always is to go test ride them both. Go with the one that feels right to you. Your opinion is the one that matters, not mine, not some rando on the internet. Go ride the bike that's gonna make you feel the most confident, that you're gonna enjoy the most, that's gonna encourage you to get out and ride and do the stuff that you wanna do. That's what I always try to tell people to do. That's the best way to decide which bike is right for you. So if you have any questions about the DRZ or the KLR that I can answer with my time on them or how they compare, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I have a playlist on both of these bikes, a KLR playlist and a DRZ playlist, which I will leave in the description for you. Lots of videos on both, including those thousand mile reviews that I mentioned earlier. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Thank you. Excellent!